Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a couple uh, interesting stories for you today. Uh, one of them involving what I feel is like a major addition, a new game coming to Nintendo Switch that um, has been speculated for a little bit, but uh, it's actually coming. It's been announced and I'm really excited about this one because of the potential future implications and obviously what the game is is really really good and beyond all that nintendo decided to sort of out, out i would say almost out of nowhere release something new that's involving the eShop and switch online uh that i it's really cool but also kind of a confusing messaging uh, but it also makes sense I don't know. Before we get into that, though, I got to remind you, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED system. Uh, if you would like to win it, it is the white version. Uh, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel. That's it. There's nothing fancy, no, uh, no, no special entry links or anything. Just be subscribed. We will announce the winner during a live stream in early October. All right, so uh, later on in this video, I'm actually going to go a bit into a potential second video happening today because we potentially have a new sponsor, or at least a temporary sponsor. Uh, whether or not they're going to be happy with me, we'll see. Um, because I told them I'm not holding back just because, you, you know, you, whatever. Uh, but let's get into the stories because this is what you really care about. And a new game was announced for Switch, and it's been rumored a little bit, although we haven't talked about it on this channel. And that is Dying Light Platinum Edition. Uh, so it was just announced by the official Twitter account today. Uh, and yeah, it, it looks really cool. Um, it is a Switch. Uh, it comes with the, the Switch game card, so a, a physical product. Uh, you get the survival guide containing most of the important tips and tricks on how to survive in the restricted zone. A two-sided map and unique stickers. Uh, so yeah, we, they don't have an announcement uh, release date at this point or a price point and all that. Uh, but this is interesting because obviously we don't have a lot of games like this on Switch. And this is a AAA third-party game. It's a zombie shooter. It's It actually reviewed very, very well on pretty much all platforms. It's 70-plus on all platforms, some of them 80-plus. Uh, it's sold extremely well, this first one. And they have a second one coming out later this year which i think is sort of what they're doing with this game is they're gauging the interest in the switch audience to maybe bring their new one over so to bring the new one over well let's get the first one first right that makes sense i mean yeah we got witcher 3 without getting the first two witcher games but i mean witcher 3 can kind of stand on its own dying lights the beginning of a new ip so why not get that that, that in front of the audience see how it performs and then if it does well give us the second one next year so uh this is why i'm really excited because we don't have a lot of these kind of games on switch that's why to me this is a pretty big deal because we have a few right and there's obviously we have back for blood coming out later this year which looks utterly fantastic and this isn't that kind of game but it is a zombie shooter it is really really good we don't have games like this it's very gory it's it's the kind of game that you don't really expect out of Nintendo Switch, which is why I'm super excited that we are getting it. Obviously, this has probably been in the works for at least six months to a year. So I don't know what studio is porting this, if they went the panic button. or uh, There's actually a, quite a number of studios out there doing excellent work porting games to Switch. So we'll have to see uh, who they chose for this. But it is really, really, really exciting. And I'm just glad to have more variety of games on, well, Nintendo Switch. Now, this next story, I think, is, it, 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 it makes sense, but it also is confusing. So, we've been waiting for Nintendo to update their online services, uh, their online in general, right? Can we get local voice chat or at least messaging in some form, whether through the phone app or on the platform? Um, what about lobbies for voice chat? That would be sweet, at least on the phone app, if nothing else. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if they could fix the eShop, right, and give us better organizational methods and all of that? Let us actually have games suggested to us based on things we played, bare minimum, um, so we could sort through some of the crud in the eShop easier without... Basically, I don't really use the eShop unless I'm looking for something very specific, so I already know what I'm going for. And if you're someone who uses the eShop and you already know what you're looking for... Okay, but like when I walk into a video game store or a Walmart or a Best Buy, I browse. I like looking at the selection of games. And because 
retail outlets aren't so overburdened. Even GameStop isn't so overburdened with thousands of new releases for a single platform every single day. It's actually a lot easier to go through physical games at a retail outlet and maybe find something catching your eye that you might not have previously bought. That's something we would actually like to see on the eShop, and unfortunately that hasn't happened yet. Now we do have a likely September Direct. I would probably bet, um, I don't know, this this hair, like, you know, I'll shave it bald if I if it doesn't happen. I'm, I'm pretty confident in the September Direct next month, and they have traditionally announced updates to the online service, whether it's Game Boy Advance games, updates to the eShop, all that happening, uh, you know, every September, at least the last two September Directs they've had. So... That is something to consider. There might be an update coming, but they did add an interesting new app. And it's weird because, well, I mean, we want Netflix, right? We want Hulu. We want Amazon Prime, uh, YouTube TV. We have YouTube, but we don't have YouTube TV. Um, why don't we have any of these streaming services? And I get it. Switch is first and foremost a gaming platform. And I also get it. Who the hell out there is going to use this when every cheap TV you buy has all these services on them anyways in a smart TV form? Although, I'd argue some of those smart TVs are so clunky to use, um, it gets frustrating. Um, literally, I have an Apple TV hooked up to a smart TV in my bedroom at the moment because it's so clunky to use uh, and so slow. It's like, nope, let's just use a Roku stick. Let's use an Apple TV, a Fire, Amazon Fire. Like, those sticks still have some popularity, not just for old TVs, but because some of the cheaper TVs out there, it's not a good experience. So that is where Switch could actually come in. You have a 1080p TV, um, you know, you have your Switch on it. Switch is actually, the navigation works well. So, uh, so in YouTube and everything, so why not have these apps? Well, they did add an app. They added Pokemon TV. Now, obviously, Nintendo owns rights to the Pokemon series, and it makes a lot of sense to have Pokemon in some form on the uh, on this service. And Pokemon, by the way, is available on things like Netflix. So it's like we're getting a part of, you know, it, it, it's fine. We're getting animated shows on this. We're getting movies on this. If you have a Nintendo Switch online account, you're fine. You can, you can watch it all. You don't have to pay anything extra. It's really cool. I like Pokemon TV. It is a nice application. I'm glad it exists, and since Nintendo owns the rights to the IP, it makes a lot of sense to be on a Nintendo platform. But what I don't get is most of what's on this platform is already available on other services that Nintendo could offer. It's kind of like, we want our cake and ice cream to go along with it. But instead of getting the cake, we just got the ice cream, and it's a party, and what the hell is going on with a party that only has ice cream and no cake? What the hell, Nintendo? We need both. We need our ice cream and our cake. So it's like, it's really confusing to me that we're getting Pokemon TV when all this stuff's actually available at other services that Nintendo could be offering. It doesn't really cost them anything, and Nintendo actually gets cuts out of people who subscribe through the Switch to those services. They get cuts of the revenue. I'm really confused at, at, at this whole situation. Not complaining we have Pokemon TV. I'd rather have Pokemon TV than nothing. But still, it is what it is. So thanks for that. Now, one last thing I want to talk about quick uh, is we might have a second video coming later today. We'll have to see how things go. It might land tomorrow morning instead. Um, Cyber Power PC. Um, I reached out to them a while ago trying to see if we could work out something because I'm trying to upgrade my editing computer and they decided that to team with me and, and get a whole new computer sent to me. Um, the thing is, we're going to do a video feature in it and I told them I'm not holding anything back just because you sent this to me. If there's a lot of bloatware, I'm going to talk about it. If it's broken in shipping, I'm going to talk about that. Um, I am not going to hold back. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting, and I already know I'm going to be doing upgrades to it next week on a live stream. So it's uh, it's an interesting situation because uh, what they're sending me is great. I mean, you get a 5900X and a 6700 XT. That's cool, but like it, it, it could use some improvements, uh, and I'm going to be doing that myself. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you, hey, here's a pre-built PC. Um, they're sending it to me. It's cool. It's going to become my main rig. Uh, but we're also going to be um, adding some stuff to it to make it even better for my purposes here. Like, you know, we're going to add in, obviously, a capture card. Uh, we're going to add in some extra, you know, different RAM. We're going to switch, you know, we're going to put in some more storage, change out the primary storage, uh, and stuff like that. We'll see about the cooling situations and what they got rocking on it. Uh, it could be really cool, or it could just, you know, need need improvements. Uh, it, it is an estimated value, as they call it, roughly 2500 although I've parted out everything. 
it's closer to like 18 so you're getting like a seven to seven hundred dollar premium although obviously a 6700 xt could cost like fifteen hundred dollars on its own right now so it is what it is i'm not complaining but we will make a video about it show it uh maybe it's going to show really really well but i told her i'm going to be honest i'm not going to bull crap people just because you sent it to me and if they get mad and want it back they can have it uh, but I don't think that's that's going to be the case. The deal's already done. I'm allowed to say anything I want to say about it. So I presume uh, they're going to put their best foot forward here. But uh, we'll see. CyberPower PC reviews are kind of all over the place. And obviously, this isn't representative of walking in a Best Buy and buying an OEM pre-built. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some custom mods to this one or something like that that, that you can optionally choose on their website, by the way. So anyways, folks. Um, that's a video potentially coming later this day showing off the new editing rig, uh, at least partially, and then next week we'll be upgrading that editing rig. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I hope you guys have a lovely day.